Now that the 40th anniversary of the beginning of the Fifth Doctor's era has come to an end, it means that the big finish Fifth Doctor releases can resume with business as usual. We've got the first Fifth Doctor range of the year from Big Finish Productions, Conflicts of Interest. We've got two three-part stories which delve into the theme of, well, Conflicts of Interest. Uh, these are stories written by John Dorney and Jonathan Barnes. Two stories here. We've got Friendly Fire by John Dorney and we've got The Edge of War by Jonathan Barnes. Along with this audio release, we also got an audiobook, Gobbledygook, by Fraser Lee, which is performed by Dan Starkey. It's an hour-long story, which essentially acts as a prequel to a Friendly Fire, and I do recommend listening to Gobbledygook either before you listen to Friendly Fire or after. I think it, I think it works out either way. It's a prequel which sets the stage for Friendly Fire. The Fifth Doctor is with Nyssa and Tegan and lands the TARDIS on a resort planet because there's some big wibbly thing happening with the TARDIS, so it needs to reset over the course of 24 hours. However, nearby from this planet, there's a mining colony called Komoko. And there lives a friend of the Fifth Doctor's called Velar. And Velar is a big six foot tall armadillo man. He's a Batarian, and the Fifth Doctor decides while we're here, while we're in the neighborhood, we're going to visit him. The last time the Fifth Doctor visited Velar is the audiobook Gobbledygook, which is part of the set, and it's a really, really good one as well. So the Fifth Doctor, along with Nyssa and Tegan, played by Sarah Sutton and um, Janet Fielding, respectively, reprising their roles, go and visit Velar on the planet of Komoko. The, on the mining colony of Komoko. However, there's no sign of Velar, and the mining colony people are very, 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 very suspicious. They claim to have not ever seen or met Velar, and then later on they're like, oh no, that Velar, no, he just left. The Doctor and Nyssa decide to check out his house, which is on the outskirts of this mining colony, and there they are held at gunpoint by a few people. We've got Alice Krieg playing Reno, who is essentially the military commander of the mining colony, who's got a bunch of goons there as well, holding the Doctor and Nyssa at gunpoint point to try and find out who they are why are they on this mining colony and they investigate velar's house and it seems that not everything is as it seems let's play a clip from friendly fire there rocks i mean they're pretty rocks sure but they're rocks i'm not sure what they're supposed to prove that's because they're not just rocks they're not they're not no, no, sir, they're not. These are prayer stones, a vital part of Batarian religious ceremonies. It's very unlikely Vela would have left them behind. To his species, they're extremely valuable. I see. But other species would likely view them as completely worthless. Precisely. If a non-Batarian was removing everything valuable from this house, they're just the sort of thing they'd likely overlook. Vela himself, rather less so. What are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything. Glad to hear it. I mean, presumably these rocks of his are pretty plentiful where he came from. I wouldn't say plentiful, exactly. Let's go with commonplace, then. Well, you've heard of weight restrictions, haven't you? Getting off-world into space, it can be pretty costly if you're carrying too much. You might not even launch at all. Are you seriously suggesting these rocks would have made all the difference? They could have done. Interstellar travel, margins are pretty tight. If you're carrying something you could easily replace, it's the first thing you're going to abandon. I imagine that would have been his books. He did have a lot of books. I'm sure he could have spared a few. Well, what other explanation is there? Maybe he's coming back to collect them. Who can say? Aliens, eh? Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll look after them for now, just until he does. What a good idea. Don't want him to go walkies. Lady seems sus. Yeah, that's the thing about conflicts of interest in that the people on the mining colony are obviously up to no good and are obviously being very, very suspicious and they know full well that they're coming across as suspicious and that's sort of the brazen attitude to the whole thing. Basically, you've got this mining colony where one of the Doctor's old friends has gone missing. No idea what's happened to them and the people on the colony are being very, very coy about everything, deliberately so. So this production is clearly paying homage to the film, the 1955 film, Bad Day at Black Rock. And if you think that this is just some weird reference I'm, I'm pulling out of my bum in order to sound artsy-fartsy, the mining colony they're on is called Komoko, and Komoko was the name of the man who the main character of Bad Day at Black Rock was visiting in the film. So these are clearly things, references that John Dorney wants us to piece together. 
And the fact that Friendly Fire is so similar to Bad Day at Black Rock, I'm almost tempted to tell you folks to not listen to Friendly Fire and instead watch the Oscar-nominated film Bad Day at Black Rock. This wasn't some sort of vague niche film from the 50s. This got, like, awards prestige. It's a really, really good film about this guy who goes to visit this western town in order to visit um, this Japanese friend of his or somebody who's got business with called Komoko. And the rest of the town folk are being very, very suspicious about what on earth has happened to this guy. So Friendly Fire, though, on its own, is a really, really good story that does a terrific job at just ratcheting up the tension. And you say in the chat that the lady's being sus, but the fact that they are being so sus and so blatant, they are so emboldened by what they could have potentially done to Vela, that it's almost a little bit scary that these friends have arrived and they are just toying, they're just being toyed around with. They're being manipulated by these really brazen people at the colony. It was actually really, really affecting. Just like how these people could have possibly have committed the perfect crime and they are so confident in how they've executed this potential perfect crime i don't really want to get into spoilers but like i said bad a day at black rock if you've seen the film you've heard this production from doctor who they're so brazen about it that it's like what are they going to do to them what are they going to do to the doctor nissa and tegan and the performances are really really strong alice krieg hits just the right notes of just being incredibly insufferable but really really authoritative you've got uh, these thugs as well who are really really audaciously performed they are just basically stereotypical oh what's going on here then we got some got some trouble coming on here like it's, it's basically what you'd expect from these roles but they're done really really well and like i said the tension just ratchets up over the span of these three episodes because you don't really know how on earth they're going to get out of this one uh, the ball queen yes it is alice creed the ball queen from star trek in the interview she does reference working on star trek i've not watched star trek so i don't really know anything about that but yeah, i do know that she's from that but yeah so friendly fire though like i said if you've watched bad a day at black rock you've listened to friendly fire but it's still a really, really good story. And even though it is cribbing from material that is literally like 80 years old at this point, it is still really effective. And there's some really strong social commentary in here. And the fact that the potential victim at the heart of this story is a six foot tall armadillo man called Vela, who really, really likes um, cooking books and really, really likes history and just seems to be this meek old armadillo man. It's a little bit sad. And the story Gobbledygook by Fraser Lee does a really great job at endearing him to the audience this armadillo man who loves his libraries and his books and he started baking but he's not very good at it you know stuff like that it's a really nice story dan starkey does a great job of voicing it as well doing the his breathless uh, peter davison impression it's really well done and you know i definitely listen to gobbledygook especially if you like friendly fire in this box set it's a really good hour it's a good audio book to listen to but yeah friendly fire is really really good i liked the setting that it was this claustrophobic um vast landscape if that makes sense they are stuck on this location the TARDIS is on this recreational planet elsewhere and they've gone to this mining colony and their ship has been potentially sabotaged by the people who are on the colony so they're not able to escape properly they are isolated in this massive desert landscape it's really really effective it's vast yet also uh, claustrophobic and I really appreciated that about the story if there's one issue with Friendly Fire, and also it's the same issue with the other story, The Edge of War by Jonathan Barnes, well, th there's two issues that are present with both of these stories. Firstly, the the Doctor seems a little bit cavalier with the safety of his companions. Like, he just leaves Tegan behind at one point because there's not enough room in one of the buggies, rather than, you know, maybe Nyssa and Tegan could stay behind and the Doctor goes on his own to check out what Velar's up to. I don't know. And the exact same mistake happens in The Edge of War, where another companion gets left behind. It just feels like, especially after Adric, maybe the Doctor would be a little bit safer regarding what happens to his companions. But also, both stories have the same issue, in that they are they're an episode too short when it comes to friendly fire obviously it's a well-worn story like i said it's referencing really good source material but also it's like it feels like it culminates a little bit too tidily it culminates uh, in a bit of a rushed way where you know everything pans out well even though it's meant to be a pretty bittersweet ending i felt like it kind of rushed to its conclusion once the story showed its hand it felt like once we knew what happened on this planet that maybe you should have had one more episode to go with it i disagree with that 
it's a it's a give and take situation the story itself is still really really well paced i just think maybe it needed one more episode or maybe half an episode to sort of um to explore its themes a little bit more effectively it's a give and take thing because friendly fire is still really well paced and if you add another episode to that then it might be an issue but i think it kind of rushed towards a conclusion especially when it comes to another character who is the doctor who is the medic on the colony and they do a pretty quick heel turn that i didn't really think felt legitimate there's a lot of sh there's a lot of telling and not a lot of showing but still friendly fire is a really good story and in my opinion it's the highlight light of the set but i can imagine people who listen to this box set the edge of war by jonathan barnes is their favorite set so this is a period story we're in france in the summer of 1936 war is looming across europe and germany is encroaching and marching across the map of europe there's the little village of Villy, which is a little bit more peaceful a little bit more quieter at the moment and nissa appears to be an artist who is visiting from Traken in order to paint the landscape and there she meets Tegan who is the local innkeeper and who would also visit this little quaint French village as well but a mysterious detective called the doctor let's play a clip from the edge of war and also about halfway through this clip it changes scenes so we've got this introduction of the detective known as the doctor and Tegan is exploring ghosts in a nearby forest with a friend who is showing her the sights let's play a clip from the edge of war good afternoon monsieur what can i get you do you know i'm not entirely sure forgive me monsieur but i have not seen you here before i'm the doctor well good afternoon doctor i am jean baptiste what brings you to our little village i haven't decided yet are you by any chance a detective come down from paris hoping for a holiday but open to the possibility of encountering an unexpected mystery yes uh, yes if you like then you should have a pipe don't you think what detective worth his salt doesn't possess a pipe what were you saying about a mystery jean baptiste right let's see what's happening starting to wonder about these ghosts of yours, Armand. I mean, this feels like an excuse for you to sit next to me in a darkened room. Ah, uh, maybe it is. But not entirely that. There have been strange stories. But it might take a while for them to appear, so in the meantime, I do have a hip flask. Now, why aren't I surprised? <laughs> Still, there are worse ways to spend an hour or two, I suppose. <laughs> Tegan? Tegan, what's that? Oh, yes. How interesting. You don't seem very shocked. I've seen things like this before. How? He's not solid, is he? A, a, a soldier, but his uniform. Oh. So the Edge of War is... <laughs> Honestly, it's a little bit of a hard sell. It sounds really, really interesting how the Doctor, Nyssa, and Tegan are presumably adopting these different alter egos or these different personalities almost akin to like human nature you know with the fob watch and where the doctor becomes becomes a school teacher called john smith and the companions have to sort of play along with it something different is happening here but the thing is is that i didn't really think that the 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 village of, Vill of villi was that interesting of a setting it didn't really have characters that really endeared themselves to me that it, it was a story that i felt kind of dragged its heels up until the third um, the third part the third episode when everything gets revealed and once it does get revealed it gets really interesting and there's some really cool concepts and ideas and tegan gets put in a really difficult situation at the end of the story and i want to see if that pays off in a future fifth doctor adventure or a future fifth doctor box set whatever they plan to do with that but I do think it sort of drags its heels along the way to get there. And it's partly because I'm not really sure what they're trying to do with the characters. I'm not sure if they want the Doctor to be the Doctor, if they want the Doctor to be a detective. I don't know if they want Nyssa to be Nyssa of Traken, or if they want Nyssa to be a painter who's travelling around France. I don't quite know what they're doing with the characters, or whether I should be investing in this alternative reality. It was something that honestly I kind of listened to quite passively for about an hour and then when the third part comes along it gets really interesting 
And then before you know it, it's ending and the credits are rolling and it's like maybe this needed an extra part to it and maybe that should have been a, a twist midway through as opposed to a twist a couple of minutes into the final episode. I kind of wish that maybe they'd committed a little bit harder to what the story was trying to convey with that and what they were trying to do in that third act. I think that we should have focused on that a little bit more. You know, The Edge of Wars, it's not a bad story by any means. I think it's got some great ambiance to it. The performances are really, really strong. The cast are great. I just think they're not given particularly interesting characters. You've got Mark Addis, who's playing Jean-Baptiste there. He's a really great voice and a really, you know, he's a charismatic guy. There's just not an awful lot to his character. Uh, there's the count as well who you know you've, you've got um he's got a title the count so maybe the doctor thinks that there's some time lord shenanigans going on here i obviously can't tell you if that's happening or not but it is something that's floated around um in the second and third episode of the story well, i like i said i just wish that maybe it had taken its concepts a bit further and that it maybe had pushed its characters a little bit you know a bit more harder over the span of the first two episodes the third part's good I just think, you know, you, I, like I said, I was just kind of passively listening to it for the first two episodes. It's not a bad story by any means. Like, I think even the worst Big Finish stories, uh, you know, they're so consistent. They're so, they're such a well-oiled machine at this point that even the worst Big Finish stories are just, you know, they're fine, they're decent, they're okay, whatever. But I thought I thought that the Edge of War was conceptually very, very interesting. I just didn't, I just don't really think that they knew where to prioritize the story or where to prioritize focusing on the characters you know conflicts of interest overall it's a bit of a mixed box set like i said a friendly fire is really really solid and the edge of war has some good ideas it just takes a while to get there i'm not really sure what the whole theme is meant to be of the box set apart from the doctor nissa and tegan land somewhere and there's some weird mystery to unfold here you know th that's that's a decent theme but i personally prefer big finish box sets where you've got two stories which are like pole or opposites of each other like the outlaws last year where you've got your fun historical romp with the first doctor and then you've got something a little bit more existential and a bit darker with the miniaturist i i prefer big finish box sets with two stories where they are like polar opposite stories whereas these two are essentially very similar ones that are played back to back like i said they even have the same issue in that i think that the third act kind of rushes its way along when it should maybe these should have been four part stories as opposed to three part stories that's how similarly i think they're kind of complementing each other i just wish that maybe they'd had you know conflicting stories it's in the title conflicts of interest i don't have too much more to say about this friendly fire if you could listen to this as a standalone release along with gobbledygook i'd highly recommend it but i can honestly imagine some people's favorite being the edge of war because you know there's some really cool big sci-fi ideas in the third episode but you've got like an hour of ho-hum storytelling to sort of get there it's a bit of a disappointment i love the fifth doctor and he's got some incredible releases as part of the monthly range with the fifth doctor you've got stories like spare parts the peter lou massacre you've got um, alien heart and dalek soul some of like the favorite fan favorite big finish stories come from the fifth doctor's range but since i've been following big finish it's i think they've kind of been missing a bit with the fifth doctor i liked the auton infinity which is part of 40 volume 2 but the rest of the fifth doctor stories including his crossover with the 10th doctor the gates of hell i think they've kind of been missing a bit with the character well actually I think the character's been good and been solid and strong. It's the stories that I've kind of been letting him down. Because I think, especially with Friendly Fire, the Fifth Doctor is the perfect type of character to have in a homage to Bad Day at Black Rock. Because if you if you throw in the Fourth Doctor or the Sixth Doctor, or maybe even the Tenth Doctor, into the setting of Bad Day at Black Rock, that story is solved in 20 minutes. But with the Fifth Doctor being a little bit more passive, a little bit more unsure of himself and you know, maybe unsure of when to challenge or when to sort of prod the right buttons over the course of an adventure. I think that having Friendly Fire star the Fifth Doctor is a really inspired idea. And I think that that's a great Fifth Doctor story. But in terms of the general broad releases, you know, he's my favourite Doctor. And I think that the recent big finish releases haven't really been reflecting that but you know it's a it's a fine box set friendly fire is really really good but as a box set overall it's a little bit more of a tough sell